At SXM, we're taking travel and tourism to new heights. Here we boast spacious check-in areas, 10 passport control points, comfortable departure lounges, and an exciting new airport mall. Finally, there's an airport in the Caribbean that takes your travel plans as seriously as you do. Princess Juliana International Airport. The experience will move you. Every year, Telem connects multiple schools across the island of St. Martin. Telem helps almost 25 schools stay connected to the internet and they do it all for free. Approximately 5,000 students and educational staff in our community has access to the internet every day at school. By connecting them worry-free every day, year after year, we help reduce costs to education for institutions so that educators can concentrate on what they do best, educate and prepare the next generation. We understand that technology adds value to education in a big way, and this year we want to do even more. We want to connect students in other ways by giving them tools to help them succeed and stay connected. So this year, we have selected all the grade five and six students from the participating schools to be the recipients of special educational kits with access to discounted data plans. These kits include essential school supplies and a free data kit to help ensure this school year is a good one. We want to help students have access to the resources and knowledge afforded by the internet as well as be able to stay in touch when needed with their parents and guardians. These data kits will have access to exclusive discounted data plans with reduced rates. These reduced rates will be exclusive to the students and staff of these schools. This way both our students and educators can continue to stay connected and in touch at a more affordable and accessible rate. To all of the students, on behalf of Telem, we want to wish you great, great, great endeavors and chase your dreams because your dreams will come true once you put in the work. And to all of the teachers that do an amazing job with all of the students, we want to encourage you to continue doing that great job. On behalf of Telem, stay connected and we are out. Boom! Welcome to the Late Night Show. Hope everything is okay. Hope everything is all right. I'm your host, Andrew Dick. And of course, today, it is all about what's happening on St. Martin. First of all, I know we're not at the regular studio. Um, this is, of course, Axum Cafe. I'd like to thank them for the wonderful hospitality at Axum Cafe. Um, it's located where the museum's supposed to be um, upstairs. You know, can't find it in the alley. You know, when you go to Front Street, Back Street, you can't miss it. Axum Cafe, Google it. It's a real place. Not like St. Martin, who's uh, pretty much been um, going on autopilot for the past couple of days. As you know, a lot is happening politically. So let me break it down. Let me bring it back to what it's supposed to be. We're going to start off with the governor appointing two informateurs to appoint or to have consultations with the different political parties that contested and got a seat in the 2024 parliamentary elections last week. Now, I know the political parties has been going on uh, what you call a radio tour this past week on different radio stations, and they're doing it they do it by the twos, you know, you, you got you got your SEM going on getting with the elected officials, you got DP going in with Krisha, you got um, um, um the no by themselves, of course, because you know you can't put Kevin in an in interview without Olivier. What? What will happen? He gonna have to actually speak. <laughs> How would that work? It can't. So obviously, you know, um Oli Chris um, representing the no. And of course, then you have um the the PFP um, you know, doing what they need to do. Um, so they've been going on the different radio stations and telling people that basically, voila, finish, it's done, it's over with. Everybody's kumbaya, everybody's happy. Eight people are ready to form the next government. It's signed, sealed, delivered. Don't even worry about it. Don't even think about nothing else. But why are you doing so much publicity stunts after the elections when we just have to go through a process? 
an actual process. Now, this is how the process works. The governor officially gets informed by the Electoral Bureau that the election results is X, Y, Z. In this case, out of the eight parties, six parties received seats, respectively. The small parties are the USM, the DP, the No Party, and the PFP. They all received two seats. The National Alliance received four seats. The Up Party received three seats. I can recite it in my sleep because I didn't sleep during the election results. Good. After we now have the 15 seats allocated to the six um, political parties, the governor then would appoint an informator. The informator's job is to have talks and to see where the political parties' ideolog uh, uh, ideologies and, 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 and the way that they want this, government, this, 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 this next four years to work can mash together because nobody received a majority. Okay. After that process is finished, the swearing-in ceremony has to take place on February the 10th. When the swearing-in ceremony, the MPs, elects, will be officially members of parliament. After that is when they can use the agreement that they signed a week ago and say we have an accord. And then they come up with a governing program and then the candidates are to be screened. Now, this is the thing that I don't understand. How is it that the USM, Dr. Luke Messalina, is going to go to the governor office and tell the governor, we don't have to do all of that. We have everything intact. We're going to have our ministers ready. We want to start the screening now. Don't worry about the swearing in yet. It's going to be next uh, in February anyway. We have enough time. Maybe we could start the screening now. Let me just begin, because as soon as we get sworn in, I want the ministers to go into, in, into office. Excuse me? Who, who, who appointed this man, um, Prince William Alexander? Oh, sorry, King William Alexander. Who? How? When? Look, slow down, my friend. I don't understand. So, of course, because Dr. Luke Mercedes didn't get um, his way by the governor, because the governor was like, no, we're going to just do it how it's supposed to be, which is we're going to just go through the trajectory of an informator to a formator to a leader of government. Let's wait, no man. What are you so rushing for? Kevin insecure? Are you sending Olivier away already? Relax. Come on now. So anyway... Dr. Luke Mercilina, of course, then told Chris, and you know, he did it very smart. He said, hello, Chris, uh, this is Dr. Luke Mercilina, and let me tell you something. I went to the governor, and I think the governor is interfering into the um, coalition process of St. Martin, and I don't know if anybody's going to say anything about it, but I am just going to say I am very disappointed Ooh -hoo. <laughs> and Chris like, uh, 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 okay, 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 mm, I understand. Two tools, five minutes later, Olivier come out with a video saying the governor is no good. The governor is a National Alliance governor. This colonialism is colonial. Let's go back Holland. He's a Dutch boy. Yeah, we know. Anyway, so I need the Fatal Four to slow their roll. Like, we understand. You guys are eager to get in. You tell the government not to do any type of, um, how you say, uh, uh, um, financial uh, um, implications and don't sign nothing. And you don't have the majority now. Like, you have to just wait until you're actually sworn in. Like, uh, you don't have it now. Mm -mm. Like, and they're not going to give you to you now. So I don't want to... Like, usually, if a coalition comes in, most of the time, most of the members of parliament are elected. So then they join together quickly, and then they pass a motion. 
and they pass a motion stating you're not to, to make no type of um, 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 dire um, 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 financial implications for the country. That's usually how it works. But they can't do it in this case because most of the MPs that are coming in are not in Parliament. So the salty members of Parliament that are there now ain't going to help you. <laughs> they're just not going to help you because they're not part of your coalition and you don't have enough. You understand? The PFP, the DP, and the, the, the USM is not in Parliament. So you got DP, you got um, PFP, and Chris now. That's only two, four, five, six, seven. They almost had it. Almost had it. <laughs> anyway, in, serious, uh, in seriousness, um, you know, I just here for the process, people. I, I think that um, people are taking this thing a bit, um, you know, serious, and which is good because we want people to be more involved in politics in St. Martin. So it's good that you're paying attention, but I just don't want you to lose focus on what is procedure and what is just political rhetoric. Political rhetoric is before, during, and after the election. It just doesn't. It just doesn't stop during the. Um, 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 right as soon as the election is finished, everybody like, okay, erase everything I said for the past couple of months, and now I am new, and I am refreshed, and my record is completely clean. It, it doesn't work like that. So they need to feed you a story in order for you to believe it, and if you say it over and over um, enough, you say it more and more and more than once, you might actually believe it. So continuing with the process, the coalition... That they have now the fatal four. They say it's intact. We just have to believe that it's intact until we have the swearing in of the new members of parliament. Then they're going to present the accord to the governor. The governor then says, okay, the minister's backgrounds um, and screenings is, 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 is taken into account, and then we'll find out whether they're going to. Um, get the advice from the, the Secret Service on the different candidate ministers. So they can still get a negative advice, but the formateur, the person who's forming the government at the time, in this case, it might be Dr. Luke Mercelina, um, he can still say, you know what, forget the advice of the Secret Service of the country, and let's just go ahead and put the minister in no matter what. And that would be on him. Um, they took a chance on um, Omar Otley because he received a negative um, advice uh, when he was being screened, and then he brought him to court, and then it was still negative, but the, um, the leader of the, the, the up and the leader of the National Alliance basically had to take the brunt and say, you know what, no, we want him to be minister, and he worked out in, in this case. We don't know what's going to happen in, um, in the case of the different people I'm hearing to want to be ministers. Oh, my gosh, the, 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 the gall of these people. I mean, listen, I hearing, I hearing things like, yes, I under investigation, but... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, 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 but that was, that was back in the 90s. That wasn't that serious, you know? It was just a small break-in. It wasn't a big break-in. It was a small break-in. It was, I was young and dumb. No, I'm smart and have vision. Yeah, I, I know, I know. Listen, I, I, I ain't casting stones. I'm just saying. They pelted rocks. What? <laughs> In any case. The new ministers are going to be screened. We're going to have some very interesting characters for this upcoming government. And I think that it's going to be one for the books. Um, as far as the members of parliament is, is concerned, they have to make sure they keep everything together, right? Because it's eight members of parliament, meaning that all eight have to go to every single meeting in order to um, for the meeting to be worth anything. Because in order for them to pass a law or pass a motion or anything, they will need the support of eight or more members of parliament. Okay? Um, I know I have to give you, I have to bring you down to the history lesson. Um, as far as the, um, the counting is concerned, National Alliance, what's going on? You still can't believe that you lost? Because for the life of me, I don't understand why they call for a recount. And then they end up losing votes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
for the life of me, I don't understand. And 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 then USM end up gaining votes. Um, the ECE was also one of the persons that um, called for a, a, a recount, and they get an extra vote. So it, at least it worked in their favor. And by the way, are you taking easy on the ECE leader? Because I noticed that are you take a whole 360 on the ECE leader um, because he was being dragged yesterday for, for wanting a recount, but yet he was being praised for taking away votes from the National Alliance and the UP. Make up your mind. Um, let's not be episodic now. I noticed that St. Martin one day wakes up and goes like, yay, we love you. Tomorrow, we hate you. The day after, deport you. The day after, you are. Which one is it? Like, let me just stick to one type of feeling you have about a person and let me just keep it going. Or maybe we can judge actions of persons instead of the person itself. Because over and over, I'm noticing that we went from the actions of a person to the person itself. And then only when it fits our agenda, we then say, okay, yeah, but what about that person? Or no, 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 but listen, that's our person. Like, don't even talk about them no more. No. Which brings me to the following topic, which I said I wasn't going to give it attention, but it bothered me. It bothered me big time. Because during my last program, um, I don't know if you remember, but Olivier Arinels um, asked for 100 days of grace period for this upcoming coalition. I said no, because my show is the late night show with Andrew Dick. It's a political satire show. Keyword, political. Therefore, what are you going to talk about for the next 100 days? The weather? Welcome to the Late Night Show. It's partly cloudy. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. So, obviously, I said no. And besides, I used to watch dog. Like, like me, hate me, I dare. I just go watch things and I'm going to bring it to the people. That's what it is. There's nothing else, nothing more. I don't need to do extra when it comes to the now, the URSM, the PFP, and the DP. You know, I just do it on your own. Like, when people tell me, oh, how you can do a show every day? I say, look at the government. <laughs> you can do something every day. Like, 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 and, and, and this is coming from the same Olivier Arnel that does six videos a day at six minutes each. The man beat my time. What are you talking about? But anyway, he made a video basically responding, saying, oh, he, it's unfortunate that I don't want to take him up to his offer. And then he started threatening me because all of the sudden now, my status, my legal status in St. Martin is questioned because I don't agree with you. We in Cuba now, what, what happened to all you? What, what was going on in this place, Pete? Because I don't agree with you, my status is now questioned. Forget what I have done for this community. And, 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 and for the life of me, you know, please, you know, young people out there, I know that you've recently decided to get into the whole political atmosphere, and I get it. You, it's exciting. I understand, but just, just a tip from an illegal immigrant, no problem. You can have me as that, no problem. I'll be your illegal immigrant, no problem. But just do some research. Like, I hate to sound so cocky, but Google me, man. Jesus. <laughs> Forget the bad stuff. The bad stuff, mm -mm. Don't, 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 don't worry about that. But the good stuff, watch that. Jeez, man, 16 years I on TV, like, come on. Ah, anyway, I, all I will say to the allegations of Mr. Olivier is nothing. I don't care. The fact is, the no. The PFP, the DP, and the URSM is going to be in government. You are you made promises. I'm going to call you out on every single one. 
So for you to say, oh, well, um, yes, I promise eight dollars an hour from now on, um, but we don't have the Ministry of of of, of Labor. We have the Ministry of Justice. So therefore, <laughs> we can't do it. Oh, but you didn't say that before they voted for Kevin. No, they vote for Kevin and Lyndon, and you're changing your tune. Which one is it? Which one is it? Oh, political rhetoric. Okay, let's put political rhetoric aside. Promises, commitments, and I know, and I have the videos to prove it. I just don't need to show it because the Martin people, I still have hope that there is intelligence out there for people to know the difference between bullshit and the difference between bullshit. It's still the same thing because if he tells you during the election season that if the no party gets a seat into parliament, whether it's one or two, they are going to complete, bring complete reform and change. And now that they're in government, <laughs> we, we have partners and we need to, <laughs> we need to you know, <laughs> keep, keep it in. <laughs> it's Kevin. I only talk on behalf of Kevin. Nobody else, because nobody else like me. Duh, you cause up the mother, the brother, the sister, the, the neighbors, the side thing, the, the main thing, everybody. And then you think they're going to all come in a room and go like, boy, Olivier, that was good, boy. <laughs> no, they want to see you drown. Maybe they don't tell you to your face because they need your one seat. But they don't like you still. So keep it moving, the man. Because it doesn't matter if you come at me today, tomorrow. It doesn't matter. I, I still going to come on tomorrow and call your bluff. So try to deport me, bitch. All right. What else? Um, the Electoral Council did a press conference. They basically reconfirmed that all the seats are still the same. Nobody changed. So it's still the same old story when it comes to this coalition. So let's see what happens. Welcome to the Late Night Show. We have a good one for you um, today. You're going to just sit back, relax, and <laughs> look back at some very interesting stuff. Um, you know, I love elections time because, like I say... We have to look at the promises that these people made. And now that they're in government, it's time to deliver. Let's go. Carlin Sons has delicious food to fit your lifestyle and go easy on your pockets. Carlin Sons, your number one spot for breads, pastries, cakes, sandwiches, breakfast, and lunch. Check out Carlin Sons today on Pondville and in Cold Bay. Hi, Mom. How are you? Hi, darling. I'm fine. Just calling to say hi. Oh, okay. We got over here. Girl, I'm here watching this movie and it. But mom, you finished all your minutes yet? No, girl. Taylor has new postpaid plans and automatically upgraded my postpaid package. Hmm? Is that so? Guess what? I am getting more minutes and almost double the amount of data for the same price. I guess I'm making a switch now. Let me call you back, mom. 
Hey Tash, you here from tell him new postpaid plans? The now is here! He represents the people of the He gets opportunity to generate generational wealth for the next generation. No more and no longer will we say our backs are against the wall. And we can't do this because of that. No longer are we going to hear we don't have capacity. We built this country. Exactly. And now they want us to pay to live in this country. <laughs> the airport belongs to us. That's right. The harbor belongs to us. Yep. The hospital belongs to us. We did not land on Fort Amsterdam. Exactly. We are the ones that have to benefit in the economical prosperity of this country. Our senior citizens have to benefit. Our students have to benefit. The generation of now have to benefit. Hence the reason why we will provide the representation that is needed. It's hard to argue with the truth. Four years ago, Chris did not sign. And he did not sign because of the same reason that we are living today, our government, and have failed. And have failed. Yes, yes. That's it. That's it. But we will write that wrong. We will write that wrong and we will generate and we will create history in this country. The first political party that will win a outright majority. We will write that wrong. I thank you all very much. I am proud of the flock that is here today. Proud. A diverse group of individuals. And you know, the good thing is, the women in this group, because they have always said, no, they always say it all the time. When you want to do something good, you give it to the women to do. They have built this party. That's right. Yeah. And I thank them very much. I thank your parents and your fathers and mothers for loaning me your children to represent this country. Thank you very much. I will not let you down and we leave no man behind. No one. We put in every one of us. For taking a bold step when I'm tired and I'm weary. And I'm like, ah, you see, <laughs> you can't throw it in now. Listen to me. People are dependent on us, and we intend, we intend to show our results. So when we spoke about, about poverty and the lack of health care, when we spoke about that, the, um, you know, it, it, we did it with a reason, and again, that is before the campaign, but when, you, when it now hits you in the, in the face mm -hmm. during a campaign, I like, you know, um, we, need to, we, need to, we need to change the narrative, okay? Right. And that's going to be our focus going into government, mm -hmm. um, Grace, honestly, because we can't get into, you know, the same old um, the areas, issues that are out there, which need and can be tackled immediately. Healthcare for all, universal healthcare. I, I'm not going to get into the discussion right, right. about the, D, the GHI, the NHI, what it should be. What I do know that there are some quick measures that can be taken for those persons who are now falling between the cracks where health coverage is concerned. Mm -hmm. this, um, the sole proprietors, the vendors, taxi and bus drivers, mm -hmm. and we can mm -hmm. deal with that. You know, deal with the the GHI in increments, you know, don't let's Jesus. jump, exactly, don't let's jump into it without being able to oversee where it will lead us to. But those kind of corrective measures to deal with those categories, it's for us a priority as we get in. And we don't want to start a promise in our first hundred days, but there are issues that we believe are critical to be dealt with in our first hundred, hundred days. There is a long waiting list from what I've heard, not only from the White Yellow Cross, but also from family members. What happens, there is a little, not an issue really, but SZV need to give a guarantee that that expansion of care will be fine. And, and yeah. so those are the kind of things that we need to get to right away. We can't have families in, in agony because, one, they have to go out to work 
and their father, their mother, their uncle, their aunt, uh, an elderly, um, is in a state of, of mental, mm -hmm. you know, needing mental care. Right, and then right. you can't, what, is the, is the daughter have, going to stay home, have to stay home? You know what I'm saying, Grace? So it is wide. And that's, that's, one, that's one thing. So collaboration for us is important. We'll pick it up with a white yellow cross and let's see how we can get to it, okay? Um, feeding people. Feeding, just feeding, giving this, them food. This is something that the party, your party, actually did, uh, I believe, during the holidays. Oh yes, yeah, 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 widely, widely so. And and but the need out there is great. So we are looking at organizations like um, the the Vegan Foundation, for example. Vegan can we work? To, yes, right. can we work together with you? Can we give a little input to make sure that your spread is larger? Those kind of things. The soup kitchens. People are hurting. Now, there's nothing wrong with being older, as long as you can keep up with the times. And that's what our tax system wasn't built for, to adapt to the changes and technologies of modern business and the changing needs of the people of St. Martin. So here's our realistic three-step plan of how PFP plans to modernize our tax system for the benefit of you, the people. Realistic. You caught the emphasis on realistic, right? Brought to you by yours truly, Patrice Gums. And me, Ludmila DeWeaver. First step. Research and establish. PFP's first question on any issue we tackle is always, where is the research? We plan on establishing a management team that will study how we can get rid of profit tax, how to adjust income tax, and of course, how to collaborate with our neighbors on the front side. Second step, implementation. Because what's a plan without action? Exactly. To update our system, we will update the necessary laws and policies that reflect the solutions we have found. Then, of course, we also have to make sure our tax office is up to date on the new changes and able to communicate these changes from the self-employed to major companies. The last step, enforcement and regulation. One of our biggest issues on the island is that we have laws, but we don't enforce them. With our new laws and policies implemented, PFP believes we must make sure that every individual and business plays their part. With that, we also want to ensure strong collaboration with businesses so that we can address the needs of the people together. Wait, wait, we're not done. A solid, simple tax basis means more money flowing in. And with more money, the government has the capability to invest back into the island and its people. Investing in our country is our top priority. Even when St. Martin was making money back in the good old days, we didn't invest enough in improving the quality of life for the people who live, sleep, eat, work, and breathe St. Martin. That stops with PFP. We will make the necessary investments in social services, social causes, our education system, youth activities, our road infrastructure, you name it. First of all, um, Lady Grace, we have been a little lost in how our country has been managed because of a loss of trust and hope in our politicians that had the mandate of the people. And what you see now is, I'm walking on the street, if you see the enthusiasm of the people running to me, running to my party members, to my elected members of parliament, mm -hmm. I have not seen one statement towards me of expression of disappointment that says a lot about, I call it an euphoric state that the people of St. Martin are in now. I want to get back peace and rest and, and stability in our community. I have a big task that I'm working on is I want to give accent to the unification of our people and I want us to stop fighting the whole day with each other, bringing each other down. It's time now for a leadership that represents all the people of St. Martin to actually for us to hold each other's hands in these difficult times that we are encountering, for us to realize that it's not about the players only on the political level that have been the leadership of this country, but it's also the will of the people to contribute and work with us as a government mm -hmm. to make this country great again. That is my first task. My second change that I want for the country is, if you look back to the country, we have failed on several fronts with this country. On social economic level, we have failed. Poverty has taken over this country. We will really have to actually take actions that it's going to elevate actually the challenges on, on 
economic, financial level of individuals in this community. We will have to do something with the poverty of this country. Further, I'm committing to the people of St. Martin that I'm going to open this airport of St. Martin before September of this year. You can keep me on that one because this airport is going is the door of our economy. It has taken too long. I assume the responsibility and it is the only promise now that I'm giving, that I commit to, that before September, I, Dr. Messalina, if I become leader of this government, is going to commit to open this airport. And secondly, we have had our failure on education level. I've always said we have to work on an education system that is going to adjust to the necessities of the labor market of our country. And on justice system, my prison is one of my concerns, together with Shamina, of mm -hmm. course, and on the other side, we have to get a strong justice system with an immigration that is going to help us to combat poverty and adjust necessities of our labor market too. Mm -hmm. Further, I have two more challenges. That is my utility company, GEBE. That's a big, big challenge for the people of my country. I want first of all to say GB is not the enemy of our people. GB is one of our partners to make us have a better life in this country. Mm -hmm. I want for, to make use of this opportunity to thank the workers of GB because everybody thinks once you work by GB, you are the cause of the problem of mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. The causes of the GB is because of this management on a higher level. We will have to talk to this course, discuss and explore possibilities to improve the, the, the functioning of our utility company. And further, I would like to, of course, my biggest baby being the hospital, to from day one, day one call all the stakeholders that be, has been involved in the construction of this hospital to make sure that they open and they open their cards on the table for me to take a decision. What is the best way now to move forward with the construction of this hospital for two reasons? For us to get an institution that ultimately would serve the people that has right for good health care, and secondly, take decision that stops the losing of money that we are throwing now in a process of construction that is going nowhere, seeing the amount of workers working there now. Every day, people go to that construction site. Nobody knows actually which direction we are heading in this country. People give me a responsibility that I have to assume. That means I have to take decisions, call the stakeholders. They have to open their books, show me where we're standing, and I will assume the responsibility to take the right decision mm -hmm. to, move, move, to move forward this country. I have more on my list, mm -hmm. ladies. I have so many ideas and dreams for my country. We have to start by the beginning. We have to combat poverty, and we have to work on our utility, our airport, our hospital and our telecommunicator. Mm -hmm. There is a big challenge coming now. Dr. Mercedes dare to speak about this. There is a big, big challenge now concerning the continuity of work for the workers of Telem. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Mercedes is not backing for that problem. My biggest dream is to keep as much people as possible working in Telem. And I want, together with the unions, to have a solution because I do not think seeing the, the challenges that our people went through now that I will come in and send more people home. Mm -hmm. I would like to get to a peaceful solution that is actually going to benefit Telem, but also the people that have worked very hard their many years of their life for this, for this company. Actually, uh, and my main, main, main thing that I would like to say, Grace, Grace, as of today, mm -hmm. I'm not talking about voters of URSM. Dr. Mercedina will become, if it shows out that I will take the leadership of this country, I will make sure that I will make no distinction on the base of race, religion, sexual preference, skin color, but also sympathy for political parties. If you are from the National Alliance or you are from the DP or from the UP, you are a person enjoying life with me in St. Martin. Who am I to be aggressive against you mm -hmm. because you have the same rights as I have to live in this country? Dr. Mercedes is not going to stand for the USM voters too. Dr. Mercedes is going to stand for the people 
of this country independent of their sympathy for a political party. You know, um, what we first need to know is what is your role as a parliamentarian? Because again, together with 14 others, we have an important role. And once we enter that parliament building, we need to be ready to work. We need to be ready to ask important questions. We need to be a co-legislator. So I expect from myself and the 14 others that we will be actively working, not only for justice, but for the other topics as well that are important for our island. Mm -hmm. Of course, with my legal background and with knowing um, what is going on with injustice and also within the prison, I can be focused on legislative topics that can tackle the issues currently and also making sure that um, based on the legal, uh, with a legal background, um, the legislation and policies that need to be in place will be in place. Of course, um, the Ministry of Justice will also be actively um, participating in that, and we have our role to also hold the Ministry of Justice accountable, but also assisting with policies re uh, related to that. So I'm seeing it as a teamwork mm -hmm. within Parliament, making sure that the topics are tackled and we, I'm ready to work as I stated. So yes, um, justice wise, but also education wise and other topics that come from within the community, making sure that we do our job as co-legislator. Right. And that's the focus. And that's why you need to have a, a good staff knowing mm -hmm. what they're doing, having the correct legal background. And as, as we also explained is, we are focused on having people in positions with the correct background so that they can support mm -hmm. um, the ministry or they can support the parliamentarians in um, the uh, supporting staff so that we won't have um, situations like that happening where, um, as I explained in the past, cases go to court while they don't have to go to court and you need to save on that part so that's why it becomes again the transparency you need to know what you're doing within mm -hmm. your cabinet and you need to know what you're doing as a parliamentarian and that's why we're focused on that part that i mentioned having people um, that have country above self and making sure that the country moves forward and also keeping the people informed um, the inclusion that Doc referred to the transparency um, sometimes you need to make a, a, a difficult decision but on the other hand, once you explain, the people will understand. Mm -hmm. Once um, people see, okay, um, this was a parliamentary election, she's entering into parliament, she has the legal background, we're missing legal background within parliament, she will be working for us, I can put my trust in her, mm -hmm. and she will assist us where assistance is needed. And I can also approach her after election and ask her, like, okay, Ms. Roseberg, um, what is currently happening? And, oh, I'm seeing that you're taking this step. Um, why are you taking this step? And that you can have that dialogue with the people because, mm -hmm. again, my focus is, and I believe um, from the other members as well, um, is informing and empowering and keeping the people involved. Right. And that's what I will be doing. All right. But what I'm focused on is that country St. Martin needs to be better. It's not about who is the next minister right. or it's not you. Why is it not you? You have to be there. No, it's focused on where can we make sure that our people will benefit. And if whatever ministry needs assistance, of course, you have to look at your role in parliament and you need to look at the role as a minister. But I will be looking at what is beneficial for country and mm -hmm. will assist within legislation um, for country St. Martin and if that will be for the ministry, of course, and if assistance is needed because again, um, you know that I'm very much advocating for within um, justice system. So if my um, expertise can be used, why not? It's in the benefit of country, right? There you so go. Um, that's the focus. It's not about Shamira. It's not about your SM. It's not about the other parties individually. It's collectively how we are going to make sure that country St. Martin moves forward. And on the other hand as well, um, yes, we are 8-7 within parliament, but on the other hand, we are 15 together. Mm -hmm. So I'm also expecting from um, the opposition that they will be working and that they will be working together in benefit of St. Martin. So when certain 
um, legal measures are being brought forward or we need to vote, that we vote in interest of country St. Martin and not, okay, I didn't bring this forward, um, I'm not going to support this. That mentality needs to stop. Right. If right. we really want our country to move forward, mm -hmm. we need to look at what is brought to the table. Do I believe in this? Will this benefit our country, and if that is the case, it doesn't matter who brought it forward as long as it is something that will benefit country St. Martin. And I'm really looking forward to that part, that we will put our individual minds apart. We will not focus on the individual in individuality, but it's collectively in benefit of country St. Martin. And um, yes, I have hope for that. So now that you see the different promises, you see some of the parties, um, some of the interviews, some of the things that were said, now you know. Let's remember, we got to remember it. We got to remember it. Don't forget, Sir Martin. Social media is a real place um, because sometimes you, uh, you have something called like storage and videos and they're like there yeah, forever unless you delete it. But then somebody might have just already downloaded. I am not somebody. So don't go bother delete it now. But if you want, you could still do it. I'm still going to show it. That is it for Late Night Show with Andrew Dick. Special thanks to Axel Cafe once again for the wonderful scenery. And make sure you come and check them out for their special events. Um, it's pretty nice out here. You know, I feel like every time I come in here, Peter, I want to just... Oh, come in soon. <laughs> oh yeah, poet um, launch, come in here. Oh yeah, that's going to be up. Hey, listen, you guys got to check out the poet. The poet launch is like amazing because then you'll actually see Pete doing poetry. Yes, Pete does poetry. Believe it or not, that's his release. I don't understand. A Russell man doing poetry. That's actually a normal thing. Thank you for watching. Till tomorrow, have a good one. Bye-bye. No more shot. No more shot. My shot, no more shot. Let me see. Yeah, I can. Yo. Who will we be? Yo. Big man. Yo, yo, you wake me up. I had a dream, man. I went with some girls in a boat dancing, and then you wake me up. Big man, wait. You had a dream about a boat? Yeah. Girls and things dancing. But me too? No. Wait, you hear that? Why are you always hearing something? You drunk man. Yo, but I'm in a boat there? Oh, yo, look at them girls. It was, it was real. Ay, yo, let me go, man. <laughs> Get up.
have like madman or madman. America, you have crackhead. Yeah, it, people are just naturally mad at America. You have, to, you have to addicted to something. Yeah, man. You remember the Jamaica, we know about two drugs crack and weed. You come out foreign, oh God, methamphetamine, error, win. This pill, that pill, oxy cotton, me I say yo, and at this point, right now, just what going on pharmacy and you turn crackhead. That's how America still. But the crackhead them from Jamaica different from the crackhead them here. You realize the crackhead them at Jamaica have talent. The crackhead them at Jamaica like them work like them and say yo. Yeah man, when the crackhead them say them and say yo, look what me can do, watch out. Uh, you know, the crackhead them, them move round and them thing there. But they have a crackhead which for me come from the Jabba. Him, him could have fixed everything where ever exists. That was Jabba Jab. But come on foreign, come see crackhead, them just lazy. Like, crackhead here just have it so easy. Them just stand up at the stoplight with a sign. Just say, yo brother, if you're not bust a back flip or something before. I'm gonna run and chuck off in the sky or something before we pay you. <laughs> but the other man has a crackhead that lift up car. <laughs> Fix engine. Crackhead all plumber from for my yard. Crackhead a Jamaica used to pick my mango them off of my chair and sell them back to me. <laughs> them crackhead are foreign lazy. <laughs> I don't know, maybe the drugs them are foreign different. Probably are that. America drugs them too severe for regular people, like that. So you always, me always like compare. Me like compare America to Jamaica. One of the things them where they take me a while to get used to. Who never realize like, we can't just like find a big stone. You ever like a look for a big stone? Somebody did say, hey boy, watch out. No big stone in sight. You're hungry, you can't go pick a mango. And everybody, America, my father tell me, say, America, USA mean you stand alone. Nobody no business with you up at this. Yeah, man, so the family member when it convince you to run off, my promise you they probably put you out after like two weeks. Can't rough up one. No man, some, we have some kind of family somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> one week kind of rough. <laughs> yeah man, I always hear them stories, you know. When people come out foreign, come out foreign and them there and them house for two days and them say, no man, I don't like what you just uh, breathe up all of the air inside you. <laughs> yeah man, that means you need to, you know, get out. Yeah. Who are second generation Jamaicans? Second generation Jamaicans? You know, children, children of Jamaicans. Yeah, man, because people were born in Jamaica, we're kind of more prideful than them, you know. Yeah, man, I realize, eh, when you ask people where they come from America, like a Jamaica, would be, they gonna say, oh, where you come from? We're gonna say Jamaica. All right, they gonna say, why ethnicity? We're just gonna say Jamaica. A foreign person, I'm gonna say, I am Guyanese and Trinidadian, or Guyanese and Jamaican. We're gonna say, yo, where you born? That is all Jamaican people want to you know. Where you born? And what we as Jamaican don't like, we don't like when somebody as Jamaican talk to you like they're my Yankee. Yeah. Yeah, Jamaicans don't like that shit. Yeah, Jamaicans, Jamaicans don't like that shit at all. <laughs> and right now, my dad cringing. Yeah, the moment you start talking like this, it's like, why am I talk like that? <laughs> no, it's, it's frightened. I got to make it say It's frightened. <laughs> Yo, when we just come here, and you, to, you know, when you meet people, yeah, you start meeting people from different, different races. You start realize how oh, different the place is. Then we start realize the stigma and the stereotypes where them have with Jamaican people. One of the biggest things them is, you say, oh, 
They might, yeah, I'll introduce yourself to somebody. They might say, oh, where are you from? They say, oh, yeah, I'm there. I'm from Jamaica. Yeah, man. <laughs> Would even sound like that? It, 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 so annoying. I am from Jamaica. What one? Why you cut it so short? Like, that sounds Chinese. What one? And not all Jamaicans smoke. All of them smoke weed. I see if weed is wicked now when them say, Oh, you're Jamaican, you smoke? Suppose they say, Oh, you're white, you snort? I bet. I bet them stop. <laughs>